Hey, welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel 15. We're going to read verses 30 to 35, then we'll talk about them briefly. Here they are. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now. Please, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring Agag, king of the Amalekites, here to me. So Agag came to him cautiously, and Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house at Gibeah of Saul, and Samuel went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. I guess we need some context here, don't we? This is a pretty rough item. So again, God had given the command, destroy all the Amalekites, don't destroy all the sheep, do not let anybody left alive. We've talked about that a couple of mornings ago. Sounds pretty egregious. It sounds like some kind of a genocide. But again, looking at the history and then with God's infinite knowledge, his knowing the hearts of every man, woman, and child, God knows what to command Saul to do. So we're just going to assume that God is right in having these people be totally ended. Saul doesn't do it, though. Saul kills some of the people, he spares King Agag, and then he leaves us a whole bunch of the, the best livestock and all that alive. And so there's a big thing between him and Samuel where Samuel says, you haven't done what God said. God has taken the kingdom away from you. Saul keeps appealing to Samuel, please come down with me and kind of be with me in front of the leaders of the people. Finally, Samuel relents and he goes down. But anyway, there's some unfinished business here, some unfinished business. God had commanded that all of the Amalekites be destroyed. Agag thinks, the king, he thinks, well, I'm going to be okay, and uh, the, the fear of death is past. So what the king didn't do, he was there to fight the Lord's battles, remember, because we want a king like all the nations. What, what he didn't do, and he didn't get right, Samuel, who had been the judge of Israel, the king over all Israel, so to speak, not, not officially king, but under God's leadership plan, the judge, the king, the, the chief judge was the leader. Under that plan, Samuel had been that for them. Samuel takes the sword, and it says he hacked King Agag in pieces before the Lord of Gilgal. So, so the command is finished. The prophet is faithful in this gruesome, gruesome tale uh, he, he actually kills him by the sword right there in front of everybody's eyes. What King Saul wouldn't do, everybody saw the prophet, the aged prophet Samuel, did do. He was obedient to God. And so, again, whatever is begun, whatever God intends to happen, it needs to happen. Whatever he commands us to do, we need to do it. And here, uh, Saul fails utterly, and it falls back to Samuel, and Samuel gets it right. So even though there's some grim pieces here, there's a lesson for us, a lesson what? That whatever God begins, he's going to finish. Whatever God uh, takes on, if the heart doesn't change, he's going to finish it in the way that is the most right, the most needful. And very sad here that Saul is left to kind of stand back and, and there uh, Samuel, old Samuel, kills the king Agag right in front of his eyeballs and all the rest of the leaders of Israel see that when God commands something, you know, I guess we do that. And it's still true today. The New Testament didn't change that. Whatever Jesus commands us, we must do. And we're going to find it's the right thing. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, please be our leader, be our guide. Oh Lord, we ask that you'll help us to be true. When you give us a mission, an assignment, help us to carry it forward. Uh, there may be tremendous odds against us, but that's okay. We don't worry about that. If we're doing what you say, that will be just fine. Bless us, keep us, use us, be our leader. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God be your leader and mine. May we take his commands seriously, and may we finish what he begins exactly as he asks us to do it. And I want to tell you, in your church in your congregation, among fellow worshipers, when you do that, his blessing will be with you.